and welcome back to Daddy, Dad and Me. For those who are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, we are adoptive parents to Little Man and have been seen around about July this year. So coming up for five months uh, since he's been with us. And yeah, it's been a, it's been a journey, a learning curve. Um, but uh, yeah, tough in places, but also really enjoyable. Um, and definitely as we come up to the Christmas holidays, um, we're busy preparing for all of that. So hope you are all well. Uh, for those who uh, are already subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for coming back. It means a lot to us um, to be getting involved. So any comments, likes, subscriptions, etc. Thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot that our message is getting out there um, and lots of people are learning about the UK adoption community um, and kind of all that is involved. Because there are many people that you don't see within the adoption process um, or some who are not even kind of spoken about. So we are trying to, to help as much as we can because when we started our journey back in 2018 we felt there was quite limited information around about adopters, prospective adopters um, and just about adoptive families. So for us it's really important to share that message um, and especially being same-sex parents just showing how normal it is um, and I hate using the term normal um, because what is normal nowadays? Um, so yeah it's just showing us as a as a family um, and how important that is for us as you'll have seen from the title um, of the video down below you will see that today's video is all about contact with birth parents um, so quite a serious video really um, and many people are often shocked by contact with birth parents but all will be um, discussed within the video and I'd really welcome any comments um, and people to get involved and just say if anyone has any questions at all please do get in touch with us because um, it is a, is a subject that isn't uh, I suppose openly discussed that much um, so yeah we just want to talk about it so people are aware of it um, so yeah grab a cuppa come on through and we will chat some more so one of the, the first kind of contacts with birth parents can be, and I say can be because not all adoptions, um, it depends on the adoption as to whether contact is made with birth parents. Try and forget about years gone by about adoptions where it was all very hush hush, no contact would, would carry on, etc. It's not like that at all. So try and come with fresh eyes um, and a fresh mind in that respect. Contact can be made and say most times it is made with birth parents. A meeting can be had prior to the child being moved to adopters but it can also happen once the child has been moved and that's really a point where the birth parents are in a place where they um, are understanding of the adoption the reasons why the adoption has taken place and it's for the birth parents and the adopters to be able to meet with one another and ask questions it's a, it's a meeting that is all well prepared um, and usually the birth parents or adopters will be in the room beforehand um, and then whoever is in there first obviously the next set of people will come in afterwards usually the birth parents will stay behind at the end so it gives time for the adopters to then move away from wherever the meeting has taken place so they can move on with their um, their physical journey home or wherever they're going so um, birth parents so no one's I wouldn't say following each other it's just so there has to be a lot of, a lot of security a lot of thoughts taking place um, in that regard and that meeting there will already be pre-prepared pre questions that would have been put forward so nothing everyone is aware of what will be discussed and it could just be where does a little boy get his I don't know sense of humor from what was he like when he was born um, what's his favorite is there a reason why that's his favorite color is there a reason why he supports such and such football team it just gives the adopters chance to fully understand more and if their child um, or siblings are of a, a younger age it gives then the opportunity to be able to tell their sons and daughters in, in years to come as part of their life story work, yes, we did we meet with your parent or parents 
and this is what we discussed. And it sets a real clear message to the child that you've oh you've met my parents. What were they like? And it it, it kind of opens up that door, which is a very positive message. Most um, meetings between birth parents and the adopters, there'll be a photo as well, and some adopters will choose to have, display that photo at home so that again their child can see that they have met their birth parents and again is it, it creates that discussion it makes that discussion somewhat easier um, to take place so that is the the first kind of contact or meeting with birth parents again it's not just a, an off-the-cuff meeting some adoptions that meeting doesn't take place the birth parent or birth parents aren't in a suitable situation um, or they may pose as um, as a risk um, so yeah sometimes that doesn't happen um, and it just it, again just dependent on the adoption and that's not saying if it hasn't happened at the time of the, the child moving in into the the placement um, and moving on with their adoption it can happen later um, so yeah it's just it's just dependent on what's happening when how and why as to whether that meeting takes place most adoptions will have what they call indirect contact so that's what they call letterbox contact again all very confidential and secure um, and that is a chance for and it's usually once maybe twice a year just depending on the circumstances and other family members etc involved for the adopters to write to the birth parents to update them every year um, or whatever whatever intervals as to what what's been going on um, and it could be what uh, what they've done on holiday, how things are progressing, what maybe nursery might be like, if they've started school, what school might be like. And it just gives the birth parents a good, um, a good understanding of what's happened, how things are progressing. And again, some adoptions don't have that indirect contact for whatever reason. Um, so it's Yes, yeah, it's, it's important for the child as they become older to become involved with that. But again, some children may not choose um, to become involved with that. So it may be down to the parents to write to the birth parents um, as to how things are going. Um, and they try and avoid Christmases, anniversaries, birthdays, just so it's not around times where emotions may be a little bit higher um, than other times so it's, it's again very well thought out um, no names of the adopters are put on to the um, the letter obviously for confidential for reasons so again adopters can't be traced um, and that's again a really important message for little ones really is that again as they grow older if the parents write back say some occasions the birth parents may not want to become involved or they don't want to write back it's all reviewed as and when to think uh, time goes on so whether they feel that I personally speaking would carry that on regardless if the, the birth parents didn't want to become involved in it purely to show our son these are all the letters that, that we've sent and again the, the frequency of them the nature of them just to update the birth parents as to how how life is going for little man um, and how he's progressing as he grows up to, to be a, um, a young man and, and boy so yeah it's really important sometimes again they can there could be multiple letters and they're also can be uh, especially in early adoptions there will be a settling letter so it could be three four months into the adoption this is how the old man's getting on um, and just kind of letting them know that things are good, he's settling well, um, and all of that. So, and I say sometimes there is no contact whatsoever. So it's it's just dependent on the adoption and what's what's going on at the time and how that is reviewed, um, and just to, to kind of carry on from there. Sometimes there are direct contacts with birth parents, and that could potentially be for a reason that the child has been adopted maybe because the um, birth parent has a life limiting illness um, which I'm aware of not um, for our reasons um, but from from other adopters and it was part of the um, 
adoption that the child would see their birth parent up until a time that they sadly passed away. So there are direct contacts and it's up to the child. Um, they will read their file at 18, that's the legal time that they're able to see everything, um, again profiles, reports um, and information about birth parents. So they can have that information at 18, it's obviously up to them if they want to to then get in contact with, with their birth parents. But everything's done confidentially, safely and securely um, to protect everybody um, in that regard. So yeah, a real um, important subject is the contact with the birth parents. So just kind of going back, you can have the meeting prior to the adoption. Um, with the, the birth parents but it can also happen afterwards and the letterbox in direct contact and that also accounts for siblings could be grandparents as well if they are or have been instrumental um, in that but it's just reviewed at a point which um, is kind of relevant and important at that time so just because for instance now that things may or may have not happened or contact may not be made doesn't mean that it may not happen in the future. So adopters have to be very open about that. Um, and again, you, that is discussed in part of your training about contact with birth parents, how you would feel about it, because some people, it probably could unnerve them and they may feel that they're not able to do that. And you would then have to be able or need to explain why you wouldn't do it and some adoptions, um, not that I'm specifically aware of, but I've heard, wouldn't necessarily go ahead if you weren't um, fully on board with contact with birth parents in some capacity. Um, so again, just something to be mindful and it can be quite thought provoking for people and we were um, and are very up for um, meeting and kind of carrying on that contact with birth parents we feel that's very important um, but obviously that needs to be reviewed um, as, as we go along um, with our journey so yeah any questions whatsoever please do reach out to us on our channel Facebook Twitter and Instagram hope you're all well probably the last video um, that will be coming will be our 2020 and I want to just basically do a year in review because it has been a real um, mixed bag of a year I shall say politely um, so I just want to do a roundup of 2020 where we're at what's going to happen in 2021 because there's going to be a lot happening and um, yeah just a nice way to end the year just before Christmas um, yeah, Christmas things have already been going up. I know it's only November um, already, but it's uh, you've got to have something to look forward to, I say. So, uh, yeah, Christmas is starting to appear at Daddy Dad and Me HQ. Any questions, please do reach out um, or email us at daddydadandme at gmail.com or contact us, DM us on any of our social channels. Please do take care and we'll speak very, very soon. And, uh, yeah, all the best. Bye.